Welcome to the WrestleTalk podcast review of AEW's Double or Nothing 2020, which had the main event of the frankly ridiculous, bonkers, stupid, nonsense sta stadium stampede match between the Elite with Matt Hardy and the Inner Circle. And it was... Now, it's been a rough couple of weeks uh, to be a wrestling fan. It's been a rough couple of months to be a wrestling fan, really, between all of the Steve Carino stuff, WWE Essential ser Service stuff, and, like, you know, Florida State and all that kind of stuff, the furloughing, um, then, you know, with Shad and, and, and Hannah and Larry Sunker, and, like, it's been, man, it's been just a rough couple of weeks and months. But this, good Lord... This brought a smile to my face. Like you know, it's like this, and and the the money in the bank for for all of its flaws that it had, Five Fly Funhouse and the Boneyard, things like this have really just sort of like lifted my spirits. And and like this, I I needed this match. Yeah, I think it was it's some it's a good bit of levity. And I think when you said is is this the match of twenty twenty. Has there been a more 2020 wrestling match than this? Uh, yeah, totally. No fans in attendance. Uh, no fans in attendance, but a bigger event like venue. Like, <laughs> that, like everyone else has downsized to cover the fact that there are no fans and, and AEW upsized. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I think it, it managed to capture, I think, what the kind of escapism of wrestling. I know Jim Cornette's going to hate it, but yeah. uh, I think the... I think it just was a much needed moment of levity. And I think it was, you know, it was a part of that part of the story that they're telling there is like, it's about putting aside your differences. And, you know, they didn't even play into the the friction within the elite in this match. You know, they had Kenny and uh, Hangman sharing a whiskey and, uh, and a glass of milk in, in the bar area. Like th this was about like, let's all get through this together, kind of to, to some yeah. degree. Um what a fun match this was. Really, really ridiculously good fun. And and with so much pomp and ceremony. <laughs> I love yes. the I love the gear that the inner circle come in with, like full American football sh shoulder pads and um custom t-shirts. There's cheerleaders, we've got uh all the smoke machines going off and the big it was an actual ring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was it the 50 yard line? <laughs> it was a, yeah, it was right at the center point of the, of this football field. They had a wrestling ring set up, which really only played a little Matt and uh, Matt Hardy and, um, uh, Jericho, I think did a couple of spots in it. But apart from that, like everyone else just mm. brought it around. I saw Ollie, it, so Ollie's uh, edited review of this will be going up around sort of this time. I think it's almost going live around this sort of time that we're currently live. So do go and watch that after you've watched this. Uh, don't leave us now. Yeah. Um, but in that review, he compares the he compares it to the Captain America Civil War airport fight scene, mm -hmm. and that was where I was like, that's exactly what it is. Like that's the best comparison for this. Because it was like these two groups ch literally charged at each other in the same way that, that Starks and, and Cap's crew do. And then they have their big brawls. And then throughout that, it then just sort of like will cut to here's Spider-Man and Captain America doing something. Here's uh, War Machine and someone else doing something, at, you know, doing something over here. Here's uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier chasing after someone. And it's just like these little pockets of different storylines that would sometimes interlock. It was sometimes interwove. And it just sort of like broke down. And it was... 35 ish minutes it never felt like it went 35 minutes it just sort of i it was at one point during the live stream we we're like man someone's got to at least go for a pin or something <laughs> i just had so much effing fun with this match and i'm sure like as you say jim Cornette will hate this and there will be those who will you know look at this thumbnail and be like you're clickbait it's not this it's not that it wasn't even a wrestling match yada 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 i i don't know what to tell you I loved it, and I had so much fun. Yeah, I think that, you know, it depends what your definition of wrestling match is. If your definition of wrestling matches abides by the rules of wrestling, this sort of did. You had to, you had to score a pinfall to win. Um, but other than that, like, yeah, what, like what could be more wrestling than five larger-than-life characters on one side, five larger-than-life characters on the other side, going crazy and ruining a stadium yeah. um, <laughs> with with comedy and drama and everything thrown in. Like, you know, this obviously very much lent into the comedy as angle 
um, which was great because I think everyone everyone in it was a really good comedic foil, like uh, Jericho specifically. Sammy Guevara as well was the, the cut, poor kid can't catch a break. What, <laughs> an, what an absolute MVP that kid was of this yeah. match. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I just think, and I, I think it was a perfect choice to break it down to the point of like everyone else who's tougher and bigger on his team has been locked away or put <laughs> put down, and then Sammy has the the that brilliant reveal of him staring off into the distance as he hears an engine revving behind him, <laughs> <laughs> and we cut, and then whoa, it's a golf cart! Oh no, <laughs> like. <laughs> And he has he gets chased the entire length of the field only to be surrounded by the elite and dumped off the top of a, a of part of the structure. Yeah. It was so good. There were so many good moments. Hangman Page arriving on a horse, like I was about to say, like, and like that Sammy thing wasn't even the wackiest moment. Like, you know, we had Hangman Page arriving on a horse and chasing Sammy through the building. Mm -hmm. We had Matt Hardy getting like drowned in a pool that Ortiz was too afraid to get in because it was three feet deep and he can't swim. <laughs> but the pool also happened to be filled with the water from the Lake of Reincarnation. So Matt got reincarnated into Team Extreme Matt and then into version one Matt with Matt facts on the screen mm -hmm. that Santana and Ortiz could see. <laughs> There's no logic to any of this. No. It's it, but it's it, the, I think the point of this match is like clear they couldn't do what they initially wanted to do for the elite versus uh the inner circle. And so instead what they gave us was something that is pure fan service. Like this yeah. is this is like it's like an episode of being the elite taken to its logical conclusion. Like this is this is if you take the kind of wacky world that they've come up with to explain themselves as wrestlers yeah you know, they're the kind of the kind of interim they've got that interim between being like genuine uh controlling parties in a company wacky wrestling character and somewhere in the middle is being the elite this is mm -hmm. that kind of thing this is i don't know it was it was so good it was just we, so much fun i really enjoyed the uh hangman sat in the bar having a drink Jake Hager comes up beside him and is like, did you come for a drink or did you come for a fight? I came to do both. They had this big old brawl with Hager standing tall. And then it was only until Kenny Omega came in for the save. And Kenny Omega managed to help Hangman Page do the buckshot lariat onto <laughs> Hangman Page and send him scratching over the bar. And they had a drink together. The they smashed every single, uh, like, what's it, fiberglass? The, the little, Yeah, they just smashed every bit of bubbly on his face. He put Adam Page down the bar as well. Like, <laughs> that was awesome. It was, but it was just like, I don't know. It, it's every, it was like, that was obviously just, I think very cleverly done because it's like just those little bits they like, teased about Adam Page's character, the kind of like, you know, the drinking in the crowd and like the kind of boozy cowboy vibe. And then they took it to a conclusion that makes sense. Like, it, yeah. you know, you want to see him have a barroom brawl. Because he is a cowboy. <laughs> yeah, there's some cowboy S words on a horse and stuff. Uh, Chris Jericho hit the Judas effect on a mascot, like, and, <laughs> and then and then topped that off by putting a cone on his head and giggling to himself. <laughs> yeah. good. He goes, <laughs> he, well, he went into he went into the replay tent to have an <laughs> argument with with uh, Aubrey. Oh yeah, over a, a two count. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> you're an s word referee it's just um, brilliant the uh the hundred yard northern lights suplex locomotion like mm -hmm. so matt jackson was doing the northern lights uh, suplex locomotion to sammy Guevara, and it would cut away to jericho and, and nick jackson and then cut back to matt and and sammy just slowly making their way down the football field until matt jackson got the touchdown and then did the alex wright dance and got a penalty for excessive celebration, so he super kicks Bryce. <laughs> and Sammy got beaten up by sprinklers, and then and that's when he thought he'd won. Kenny, Kenny and Matt chase him down with a golf cart. He gets surrounded, and then they hit the one winged angel like off a load of seats through this big crash mat mm -hmm. nonsense. It was like at the end of this year when we're looking back on like the best matches of 2020. This will end up being on the list mm -hmm. because I laughed so much throughout it. I completely understand if it's not your cup of tea. I really, really do. And I'm not going to say that you're wrong for, for not enjoying this. 
but man i had so much fun with it and for me this is it's one of my matches of the year it's one of my matches of 2020 i think it's i what i like about it is that it is flexing the muscles of those guys in a completely different way like we know that kenny omega is perfectly capable of a seven star match we know that you know we know that the bucks can reach those heights we know that pretty much every single person in that match could put on a absolute technical wrestling showcase with storytelling and drama and it could go half an hour just in the ring with crowds chanting whatever they can't do that at the moment so instead they put on something that is completely the opposite direction it, it requires no audience it, it it flexes that completely other bit of wrestling that you know these guys are all perfectly capable of tapping into as well which is just being bloody funny bloody entertaining yeah um, and yeah it, i just thought it was brilliant Thank you.